Hello YouTube and welcome to my lab. Today we're going to uh, show you how to repair a reversing switch and a mini lathe. Here I'm demonstrating where the uh, forward doesn't work, however the reverse does work. Uh, it seems like this is a switch going bad. So let's take it apart and see what we can find out. Pull the screws out and we'll get into the side of the cover there. Uh, here's the circuit board and I'll show you where the switch is. It's up there on the top left and I'll point to the reversing switch with the crossover with the screwdriver here in just a second. Before I determine this is actually bad, I'm going to actually test it uh, with a multimeter and see if I can get current to flow. The biggest challenge with this project, as you can imagine, is just pulling the wires out of the existing harnesses. Oh, hello, Larry. What are you doing? Oh, you wanted to be in the movie? Well, here you are. Here's your cameo. And now, back to work. Struggling with this wiring here. Let's go ahead and remove the ground strap, and now we've got the control panel successfully separated from the lathe. There's this plastic cover I'm going to remove. It's supposed to keep all your filings and shavings out of the electronics. See how well that works. And since I machine brass all the time, here we go. Brass shavings all over the place. Hopefully in this process we can figure out where they come from. Here I'm actually testing uh, the switch here with the ohm meter and uh, it's in reverse position now and I'm getting continuity and then I'll switch over to uh, the forward position and test and I get no connection. So now that we've identified the switch is bad, it's definitely time. Let's go ahead and replace it. I went over to uh, the local radio shack and picked up a 30 amp uh, dual pole dual throw switch and uh, I'm going to duplicate uh, the existing switch that's already in here. We're going to start by removing the existing switch. Uh, it has a ground cable uh, with a second nut. It's got a long, um, long shaft on it. Uh, the newer one does not. I'm pulling the wires loose here. And here's the switch. Let's see if we can find out what's wrong with it. I'm just showing you the crossover connections here, how they're soldered into this switch here. Uh, the two lugs there go to the control board and the motor went the motor lugs went to the center connection so let's go ahead and disassemble the switch and see what we find out uh we've got to pry these connections back and then i'll we'll peel open the switch and we'll see what we find so usually i'm looking for a uh, burnt or uh melted connections uh and here i'm surprised i don't see any i'm, I'm checking the contacts and they seem to look okay but when I look in there, I see a lot of shavings, brass shavings, metal shavings, all kinds of stuff. Get the light on there. I really don't see the main problem. The only thing I can figure is the shavings are blocking the connector from connecting 100%. After tapping it on the workbench here, you can see I got a lot of stuff in there, shavings uh, that built up. Now this lathe is over 10 years old, so uh, this stuff is obviously working its way in somehow. Uh, let's see if we can identify what's going on. And here we can see more shavings on the other parts inside the switch here. Uh, here we're going to take a close look at the switch. And uh, if you try to look, um, you can actually see light through there. There's a bunch of space in there. So what happens are where the chips fly up, they go and they fall inside the holes there. And they're actually falling inside the switch and building up. Uh, here's, here's the new switch that I purchased from Radio Shack. And uh, as we go along, you look, it's different on the front. It doesn't have such a large hole on the front. So let's move on to rewiring the new switch. Uh, I got this fast forwarded, but I'll stop and kind of show you the detailed parts. I'm just creating some uh, ring terminals here, and uh, then I'm going to go ahead and uh, create other ring terminals. I'm going to cut off those connectors and double them up. Right here I'm getting some brass washers uh, just so I got a better connection on the wires here. So coming up here is the detail. Uh, when you come across on the outside lugs, what you want to do is cross them when you tie them in. Uh, the two connections uh, that I have, they're going to go to the control board. Here's the crossover right here. Um, but the, the, the two uh, terminals there will go back to the control board where they originally were. And then what we'll do is extend wires uh, to go directly to the motor. And what I've chosen to do here was go ahead and use butt connectors just to make it simpler to uh, reinstall this to the motor and I cut off the original connections at the uh, lathe and I install the uh, the male sides of the butt connectors. Uh, 
And here we go, we've got the finished switch. Um, I have lost some video here, so installing the switch is kind of missing, just a quick little blurb, pretty self-explanatory. And we're back over to the lathe installing. Again, the toughest part was reconnecting uh, the connectors from the power in. You can see the two butt connectors there. Uh, now I've got the, uh, now I'm reattaching the ground lug. And before I put it all back together, I'm gonna go ahead and test and make sure that it's right. I do have a good chance of having uh, my polarity reversed, which I'd have to split the butt connectors. I'm only inserting them partially here, and then uh, later you'll see that I fully insert them. So I'll plug the lathe in here now with the control panel off and I'll just do a quick test keeping my hands and appendages away from power here. And uh, we have success. It works in uh, forward direction. It also works in a reverse direction as well. So now it's time to button this thing back up. We'll put all the wires back in. You'll see I'll firmly install all the butt connectors and then I'll screw the panel back on. And uh, then I'll do one final test and I'll conclude that this was a successful repair. So closing out the video, I'll show you guys one more test of the motor, both forward and reverse, and speeding it up. Um, I want to guys thank you guys very much. I hope you found this interesting. Uh, please leave any questions or comments. Please leave any questions in the comments section. If you like my video, remember thumbs up, subscribe, and share with your friends.